This is the universal sound of pool halls everywhere. And in nine out of 10 of those places, you'll be playing a valley or dynamo pool table. Literally any bar you go into is gonna either have a valley or a dynamo pool table in it. The coin-operated pool table was invented by Valley, and they're still rolling the game forward today. We've always been the ones to come out with a new innovation that everyone else will copy. Virtually indestructible, these tough tables can take more than a few spilled beers and broken cues. I've seen tables from the late 60s that are still played every day. They're played every day and just about everywhere. Our tables will go from uh, New York to New Delhi. Pool is an evolution of the game of billiards, which was born in France in the 15th century. Since then, the game has garnered a few famous fans. Whether for competition or sport, the game has stood the test of time. The table itself is just an instrument that's being used in a competition between two people. The Valley Panther table comes in three regulation sizes. What makes a pool table regulation size table is it must be twice as long as it is wide. Plywood is the main ingredient. These guys go through a lot of wood. The wood is sent through CNC machines. The exterior panels are laminated under a cold press at 60 to 80 PSI. Once all those components are done, they go to our assembly line. The first line station is a steel table that is perfectly flat, which means the cabinet built on it will be level and the balls will roll properly. The cabinet is pretty much just the hull of the table, and that's uh, where it all begins. The table is built upside down. The round corners are screwed into the end walls, and then the side walls are slid in. Then he inserts the bottom, and he nails the bottom to previously assembled cleats. The cabinet gets turned right side up before it goes to the second station, where a sub-assembly is made. The first part of the internal assembly is the cash box. Sold in 40 different countries, the cash box is adapted to the different currencies. At the back end of the coin slot is a mechanism called the push-shoot end. The push-shoot end has on it a hardened steel roll pin. The pin pushes against a hinge bar, which drops the balls to the ball return. Just imagine 15 billiard balls. It's that long. The cue ball has to be separated so that if it's scratched during play, it's returned to the players. Valley uses magnets to separate their cue balls. Valley invented the magnetic separation process. The cue ball used to be slightly heavier or larger than the rest. Now they use magnets. There's a magnet built into one side of it, and it'll pull it over a pivot point and allow it to drop and come out a different hole than the rest of the balls. When a ball drops into one of the pockets, it enters a system of canals called the spider. A slight variance, this spider only has six legs, one for each pocket. So the balls come in through the spider, they get to the turn ramp, they make a 90 degree turn, then they make a 45 degree turn into the separator, another 45 degree turn into the ball trap, the spider was invented by Valley in the 80s, and it comes to them from an injection molding press in Indiana. Before the spider, we would literally build wooden ramps coming from each hole to a center ramp. Nothing gets stuck in a spider. If chalk or something bigger falls into the pockets, the balls will push it along until it falls down slots in the spider. Once the spider is in, the table is now ready for the top frame. One of the most important part of the table is the top rail. Yes, it is. It's got to be perfectly flat and straight. Once the top rail is flat, it's glued and clamped to the table and tested for levelness again. If there's a gap in between it, what we're going to do, we're going to ask you to use the clamps to level the table out to make sure it's flat. Once the clamps are adjusted to have a perfectly flat frame, it's good, perfect. We screw the frame on. Next, gully boots are added to form a transition between the pocket and the spider. And pocket liners are put in to absorb the impact of the balls. With the bottom of the pool table finished, it's time to tackle the top. This hunk of rock looks like it's straight out of the Flintstones. In reality, this slab of slate from Brazil is the tabletop. The best material for billiards by far is real slate. That piece of rock is pretty hard to beat. Slate gives the weight needed to hold down the table and provides a great playing surface. We check every slate before we put it in the pool table to make sure it's within 20 thousandths of an inch of perfect flatness. 
twenty thousandths of an inch is the width of five one dollar bills. The rock also has to have a consistent thickness. For this table, it's three quarters of an inch. If it passes a certain part of this gauge, it's unacceptable. It's got to be perfect slate. Once the slate is passed inspection, it's covered in fabric. Professional tables use a finer cloth for speed, but typical bar tables use cloth made of Australian sheep wool coated in Teflon for durability. If a beer's dumped on it, you just take a bar towel and sop it up. It doesn't absorb it. It's great stuff. They go through about nine to 10,000 yards of cloth a year. That's more than twice the width of Manhattan Island. It's cut and glued to the slate. He folded the edge down here, glued the bonds to the slate. He's gonna stretch it out. This way it's a real tight fit. The fabric is stretched over the slate, ensuring that there are no wrinkles and no flaws. Now the slate is complete. The rock has to be lifted into the table by machine as it weighs about 350 pounds. It's heavy. <laughs> I'm going to put some shims all the way around the table to keep it from vibration just in case the table is flipped on its side and it will not break the slate. Six felt covered cushion rails are bolted to the table. Cushion rails help balls rebound off the sides while keeping them on the table. The cushion rails have a dual density pad made of gum rubber, which is a mixture of rubber and clay. In years past, the uh, rail rubber was softer than it should be but then they would use uh, a piece of cloth to stiffen it up. These days, they know how to do it right. The nose of the rubber should have been harder. It should have absorbed the shock. And behind it, the softer rubber would push the ball away. Even the angles of the cushion rails are important. What happens if it was too low, it may cause the ball to bounce and react and bounce. Or if it's too, if it's too high, the ball would actually stop. Among Valley's many patents is the flush mount corner casting. Before, corner castings would sit up from the top rail. Now, the pockets are flush all the way around. For years, players would complain that when they had to take a shot over the corner of the table, they had to jack their cue up a little bit. It also prevents expensive pool cues from getting nicked and scratched. It's improvements like new corner castings that keep Valley and Dynamo at the top of their game. We've always been the ones to come out with a new innovation that everyone else will copy. Pool tables have been manufactured in the United States for over 200 years. Valley didn't get in the game until much more recently. No one had ever manufactured a coin-operated version until Valley did it in about 1950. In 1999, Valley merged with another pool table manufacturer called Dynamo. Now Valley and Dynamo tables can be found in pubs, pool halls, and of course at competitions around the world. A lot of them will go and buy our home version of the same exact table so that they can practice on the same thing that they compete on. They make about 15 tables a day. Before this one's ready to go, it needs some finishing touches. Now that the cushion is set in place, I will now put the trim on the outside to so complete the table. The rail trim is made of aluminum. Valley moved the placement of the screws that hold it on so that players don't catch their clothing on the screw heads. Now we will move to the next station, and that's where they do their final inspection. The table is made spick and span. That's most important is the cleanness, the function of the ball, the parts and components of the table. If the ball and the components are functioning properly, it gets a set of billiard balls and a triangle. This is ready for packaging. Moving the finished table requires a little heavy lifting. That table weighs 710 pounds. Then it's off to a bar, entertainment complex, or competition somewhere in the world where it might be seen 50 years from now. Uh, we've always followed the original ideals of, of the Valley Company, which is to build the very best product that you can and then teach your customer how to be successful with it so that we can be successful.